yeah let's get into this 45 rpa ui path questions one by one so the first one that we come across is what are the benefits of managed packages in ui path give it a thought give two minutes to at least answer or frame your kind of answer that you would have given to the interviewer if you would have been asked that particular question so for me it would be this particular answer right here that is the manage package option in ui path that we can see right here this particular thing is definitely an important aspect of your project implementation because it allows you to install the packages that are needed for your implementation so you can actually manage all these activities that are available right here through this particular option you will be able to go through this manage package and install any of the package that you are unable to see right there it can be maybe word activities just have to type word and you will be displayed a set of packages that are available to you okay and you can just install them whichever is needed so this you can go right here and click on install and then save it and if you don't want to have some of the packages that are already been installed you can go right here and then uninstall them so this is the main functionality or main benefit of this particular manage package so this is what i have tried to document it right here so the next one is different steps involved in life cycle of rpa so as any other process or any other technology rpa is no different from other traditional kind of programming it's almost similar let's go into each one of them first thing is process identification where you will be trying to get a process which can be automated right if there is a person maybe a particular business process is being processed by a human you go and sit beside him and try to analyze if this can be automated by a bot so number one thing that you have to understand is if it's a rule based thing only if it's a rule based then we can give it to the bot right so that's where we'll be able to identify the process the first thing the next one is design okay where you will design which technologies has to be used in this particular tool maybe for input you can use queues or you can also use database and you can use sharepoint or it can be anything even mails okay and which technologies has to be used and how this particular thing has to be built at least so this all defines the design of it and then comes the development so once you are done with the design the next phase is development obviously so we'll use the studio uipath studio and implement whatever you have designed and after that the testing testing is something that maybe you are a qa person working in your team might be working on okay once he gives a sign off it will be sent to the uat which is nothing but something being tested by the business itself so after that we have deployment deployment where we push it from dev to qa to production so this is the whole flow and after that the last thing is maintenance because once a particular process goes to live the next thing that happens is you have to give an intensive care to that particular thing at least for few weeks and after that the next thing is crs there will be change request coming all over and you have to be implementing it now and then so this would be the rpa life cycle and then what is the use of output panel in this output panel have you ever actually have gone through it maybe if you are familiar with ui path definitely you would have actually seen it so this is the output panel the main use of this is like whenever there is a process being executed right it will generate few logs so that you understand what is exactly happening inside this so here in the output you will have different kind of logs so it can be error maybe if there is no uh, dependency if there is a dependency that you need in your project and it is not available then that will be thrown as an error 
and after that this is warning so if something is depreciated and you are still using it it will give a warning saying this will be soon faded away so just upgrade yourself and then there is an information it gives out any stages or any logs that you have manually given to the bot okay and then comes test cases and all these things so this is not necessary for you at least at right at this stage of time and then this is something where you can export all these things to a text file so once that is done you can also clear it up so this is what i have written right here it enables different log messages and this is how it will look like and the next one name two activities that can be used to enter data into web page so web page web pages are something that will be dealing throughout our career as an rpa developer because any process that you are trying to automate right most of them will definitely have web pages so that is what you have to concentrate on it can be web pages or it can also be windows applications or anything there are two ways of doing it at least okay at least because there can be n number of things that you can do and these are the most commonly used activities the first one set text so it will have a behavior which is similar to copy paste right it will if you give a text to it, maybe you have a text called sharath and you want to paste it somewhere so that is how this functionality works like and if you are using type into this is similar to like a human where we enter a kind of button one by one so this is how this will work so that is the only difference between this two and this two can be used wherever we want to enter some data and then comes what is an array this is a question that is definitely that will be definitely asked to you if the person who is interviewing you is from a programming background so what is an array array is a collection of similar type of data types okay and it is a fixed entity if once you define it or declare it you will never be able to add items or delete items from that so there is no modification available so this is how it will actually look like if there is a array of five elements the first can be accessed by using index 0 1 2 3 4 and this is how it will look like you will be able to access each one of this element using index yeah then moving ahead what is a data type and give few examples of ui path supported data types when the question comes about data types right ui path supports all the data types which are supported by dotnet framework itself so if i just take you through this and then i let me take a xaml here yeah right here if i have the variables okay if you are not aware of variables don't be confused about it okay soon we'll be looking at that too this particular section here will give you different data types available for us to use so hold this set of data types can be used okay all this have come from dotnet framework i have maybe integer here if i just type int i'll get all those related data types here if i just want to use boolean it is also available to us from right here as you can see okay boolean so and then in the similar way we can have data table which is a representation of table like this we have data table and all these things so you can mention that these are few of the commonly used data types okay and these are the examples for them and then also try to learn the default values of each one of this particular data type for integer it will be 0 okay and for boolean it will be false all this kind of things you can start searching for okay try to understand them at least and then can you please explain about dynamic selectors so if you have been learning ui path you have definitely known about selectors what is a selector selector is nothing but suppose there is a site called google and you as a human type something and enter on this particular google button right so you see it with your eyes but for bot it doesn't understand 
it doesn't have an eyes right like humans so it will try to understand it through some elements with which this is built if i just show you i'll just go here and i'll use ui explorer yeah so this is there i'll also open google here yeah so this google is there so if i just try to indicate it for every element there you have a particular text coming up so this is nothing but selector it consists of different attributes okay this the name for this is google search okay, and it is in the table column column 2 and table row number 1 so this is how it will be able to identify a particular element on the screen but for few of the websites okay this particular thing is very dynamic such that right now we have maybe i can just show you as the name is btng okay and this will definitely change for few of the elements okay for that elements we have to take anchor activity okay that will be able to get us a stable selector in case if there is no stability in that particular ui element so this is what you can start explaining to them okay in that case you can also use wildcards asterisk basically or question mark okay this will help you make that particular static thing a dynamic selector and then some of the attributes are like id class type all these are attributes okay that make up makes up the selector then the difference between excel and workbook activities so there are if you just go back to this right and go to activities if you just type workbook so there are few activities that are related to workbook you can start reading the excel and you can start writing some excel data into it and then you have read column append range if there is already data and you want to append something you can do all these things and there is another thing if i just click on excel right here there are some activities under excel so what do you think is the difference between them it's just that this activities will work only when you have an excel installed in your particular laptop but this the other one that i was talking about will work even if you don't have the excel so this will definitely give you a lot of other functionalities that the workbook will never provide you because it's just a basic one available so that you can start working with your particular tables so this was the difference between them the major difference that comes along with it and then what is an attended and unattended robot so this is the most important or most frequent question that will be asked by anyone who is taking an interview for rpa developer so as you can see attended robots are something that will work along with humans and it will help them do a part of their work by helping them to get it done soon or it will just help them increase the efficiency so this is one thing and then unattended robots this doesn't actually need any human intervention okay they can directly work without a human okay this all these processes will be back office works so it will be given an input and will give us an output and there is nothing expected from a human okay so this is what an unattended bot is and there is an another one coming up which is hybrid model which is a combination of attended and unattended so here an unattended robot can trigger the attended robot and attended robot can actually trigger an unattended robot so this is how it can be used the hybrid model and then comes the difference between variables and arguments variables are nothing but which will help us carry a data within this particular xaml okay if you are not aware of what is a variable variable is nothing but a container which will actually hold some data into it it can be of any type it can be of data table integer boolean string or anything for that matter and argument is something which will help us transfer or carry some data from one xaml to another xaml so if there is a particular this thing here 
okay if i just go right into it don't be confused about it all these things you'll be able to understand if you can just explore ui path a bit so inside this this is how the arguments will be passed so some value which is nothing but this value is being sent through an argument called in config into an another file so this is how arguments can be helpful to send one data from one xaml to another xaml so this is what i have mentioned it here yeah so this was about few of the ui path questions so soon i'll be posting the other two and you'll be able to find this particular document in the description hope you have gained some knowledge at least were able to understand few of the concepts that maybe you are not aware of all the best